So Hunter Dickinson, as if he listened to our podcast after he committed to Kansas, because on that podcast, I asked you, like, has he ever explained why he left Michigan? Like, what is the explanation for him? Like, with most people, it's like, well, playing time or whatever. It's like, this is an All-American centerpiece of the University of Michigan. Why did he leave the University of Michigan? And I think you told me he had not ever gotten into that, or at least you hadn't seen it. I had not seen it either Um, on a podcast. Um, I guess it was last night, yesterday at some point, he did finally explain why he decided to leave Michigan. Long story, not so long. He s- indicated, suggested it was about money. Said he made less than $100,000 over the past year at Michigan in name, image, and likeness. Here's the quote exactly. The people hating on me would leave their job right now for a $10,000 increase. I got at Michigan less than six figures. I got less than six figures at Michigan for the year. End quote. Mm -hmm. Deadleg, do you find Hunter Dickinson's explanation compelling or not so much? I mean, to a certain extent, sure. It is compelling. It's not surprising. Um, I'm not going to give you the player. But whenever you hear about these NIL deals, always assume that they are inflated. Always. And I mean always. There's someone who will be picked. I'm just going to go broad here. Uh, there's someone that will go in the first round of this year's NBA draft. And I spoke with I, shy of speaking with the actual player and no, this was not the player's coach. It was a very, very good source on this. You might, you might think that this player that's going to be picked in the first round would have commanded, you know, anywhere between say 20,000 to maybe even 200,000, $300,000 in NIL money last season. And the fact of the matter is, and the person telling me this like has nothing really much to gain from it, but you know, they shared it uh, and they shared it on background. So I'm not going to reveal who it is. The player made $5,000 in NIL money last season, 5,000. Well, I would it was like, well, was that Taylor Hendricks at UCF, a nothing recruit who was at central was Florida? Not. And that's the only one. Okay, I but I'm just saying, not. It was not, but I'm just saying, if you told me it was that person, a projected first round pick only made $5,000. Well, would that's because someone he was that a, you think would make more. So my okay. point, I only bring that up to say, NIL, which is out there, thankfully, and it's still an evolving space. When you hear these figures get tossed around, just know that many times the figure that gets either reported, gossiped about, rumored about, oftentimes will be inflated. It could be inflated by 10%. It could be inflated by 80%. Um, So I'm not surprised to hear this from Dickinson at all, at all. I'm not. Uh, To say that it also had an impact on his decision to transfer, not surprised whatsoever. Hunter Dickinson, uh, you know, may well see the writing on the wall. And though he will try his damnedest to be able to make a really, really good living uh, playing the sport for the next 10, 15 years, he may realize that, hey, listen, maybe I will have a certain cap on my revenue and I'm going to try and maximize this at the college level as best I can. And I know how much I can make at Michigan. If I decide to get a fresh start, go somewhere else, maybe I expand my game, improve my NBA prospects. And in the process, oh, by the way, I can make myself an extra 50, 100, 200, $300,000. Why would I not do that? I don't fault him in the slightest for making that decision. Okay. First, his premise is wrong. His point is accurate. The point he was trying to make, but he used the wrong number. The people hating on me would change jobs for a $10,000 increase. That's just not true. Some people would, not everybody. Would you okay. change jobs for ten thousand dollars? Would you? That, 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 let, me, let, me, let, me, let me put it another way. Let me put it another way. Would you take a job you don't want as much as the one you have right now for ten thousand dollars? Do we know? No, I would not. Do we know that's true with Hunter Dickinson? Do we know that what's true? That he doesn't want the one. The, what you just laid out. It sounded like you were saying he wouldn't want Kansas as much as he wanted Michigan. No, no, no. That's not what I mean. But my point is simple. Um, the idea that anybody would, would change jobs for $10,000 is just fundamentally untrue. I'm telling you right now, I would not take a job. I, I don't, I wouldn't prefer to this job for $10,000. I just would. In fact, I never mind. I'll just say that I would not change jobs simply for an extra $10,000. It would have for me to change jobs for $10,000. It would have to be a job that I already want to take anyway. And I'm just getting an extra $10,000 out of it now. So, so the, the number he used, that's not right, but let me put it another way. Let's say just for the sake of the conversation, 
He's on record less than 100000 at Michigan. Let's call it ninety. All right? Let's call it $90,000. I talked to somebody who was pretty plugged in at Kansas who, who told me it's all third-hand information. I'm not really sure. But he would guess at Kansas, a million bucks. A million dollars. Could be more, could be less, but a million bucks. That feels about right to me. So here's the question. Would anybody change jobs if they could multiply their salary by 11? I now we're talking. World, I can see a world in which that's possible. Yes. Hey, I like working you. with you. I hope you like working with me. I'm confident that if somebody said, Norlander, what do you make? And you told them a number and they said, let's multiply it by 11. You would, you would leave quickly. I don't have the sound on my board to, to respond to that. That's correct. That's correct. Yes. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm okay. willing to have a significant pay increase to that level if anyone's out there. I'm, I'm, willing to, I'm willing to have it if it's out there. Yeah. I love every job I have. I ain't looking for any other ones. But if, somebody, if, but if my contract was about to expire and somebody said, what are you making now? And I told them and they said, let's multiply it by 11. I would have to change jobs. And when put that way, not only do I understand why Hunter Dickinson left, he'd be crazy not to. Financially irresponsible not to do it. Because we ain't talking about Brandon Miller or any other projected lottery pick. We're talking about a guy who it isn't crystal clear he'll play in the NBA. And so it is possible the most money he'll ever make playing basketball will be made while he's playing college basketball. And if you can make a million dollars at one place, less than 100000 at the other, it would be financially irresponsible to not go to the other place. There's not a coach in America outside of maybe Mark Few <laughs> who wouldn't change jobs if you said we're going to multiply your salary by 11. 11. So I don't know why yeah. would question why. I don't know if he's making a million, by the way. I feel like that number might be high. That's just me. Okay. But, but the 90000 number... The ninety thousand number might be high too. It's just one I literally yeah. just made up. Even even if he went from eighty to four fifty, like it's the same. Financially irresponsible not to Correct. do that. Yeah. So, okay. like, what are we even talking about? What is the what argument talk about here? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Like, like, you, let's say you make let's say you make a million this year, and he has another year of eligibility left, doesn't he? He's been uh, a three year college yes, basketball player. Yes, he does. He does. Yes. Yeah. So he's got two years. So let's say at Michigan, you could make a little less than 200000 over two years, or at Kansas, you could make a little less than $2 million. You could pay off your parents' house. I don't know his family situation, but you could pay off your parents' house. You could buy your own house. You could invest. You, you, whatever. It would be financially irresponsible for him to not make a move under those circumstances. So again, not only do I understand it, I think it I think it'd be crazy not to do it. And if you're Michigan, you just got to, if I'm Juwan Howard, I'm not bothered by that quote as much as I'm sending it to every one of my boosters. This is, this is the world we're living in now. You guys want to help me keep our all Americans or not? Cause if you don't, this is what's going to happen every year. Mm, yeah. That's the subtext to it. Interesting. Again, I, I, Hunter Dickinson can speak as often as he wants about his decision here because every time he seems to, he seems to it just keeps that content machine moving, man. I, I, I'm, I want to see, aside from all of that, I want to see how, how good he can become on top of what he was because in doing this, yes, in going to Kansas, there is going to be a lot of attention on him. And this comes, this is part of it, like him speaking out on this. Hey, Nigel Pack, we knew the number. And he, you know what? I'd say he pretty much close to lived up to that. That he's got year two coming up, by the way, of that two year contract. There, he helped you get a Final Four. Money well spent. Yes, and Dickinson is uh, and playing at Kansas. Yes, you you open yourself up to uh, to plenty of attention and, and and praise or criticism depending on how you play.